How are you doing? Hey Alex, I'm very well, thanks. I'm glad to see you. And today we're actually going to do a Mad Libs challenge. This is Abigail from Me by Sim Static. Hey Alex from Whispered Moon. It is so good to feel like be doing this collab with you. Um, I've enjoyed watching your videos so, so much and you just have such unbelievable talents and also great choices of fabric. So excited for this challenge. I'm so excited for this challenge. We're actually doing something that's interesting and I haven't seen this really done that much before so it's actually a Mad Libs challenge and if you've never played this game before it's where I have it. yeah, it's like a game that I played when I was in elementary school and I'm American so mm -hmm. maybe that's just a regional thing I don't know you have this like paragraph or so of this story and words are taken out of this story and replaced by like fill in the blanks with descriptions like adjective, noun, verb, and you replace those words. After you do that, you have this crazy story full of random nouns, adjectives, and verbs. So today I want to play this game, but instead I want to make this a fashion challenge and we can actually have something, an outfit. So I'm looking forward to trying this out and I hope that this works out well. Me too, this sounds like a phenomenal challenge. Yes, let's get into it. So I'm gonna probably do the whole next section just looking straight into my laptop because it's way, way easier. So okay, that's fine. the first thing I'm gonna need is like a date or a time of the year. A date or a time of the year, how about spring? Would that spring. work? Spring. Spring okay. works perfectly. And I'm gonna need a celebrity name. Ooh, a celebrity name? Oh goodness. Um, you put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> let's see. Can I just say Nancy Drew? <laughs> I mean, for sure. I mean, okay. who doesn't love a little bit of uh, literary detectiveness? Let's go right. For that. So we have special events. So uh, yeah, special event like could be birthday, you know, wedding, that kind of thing. Uh, let's go for going to the theater. Ooh. Okay. Oh yeah, we need an emotion. <laughs> oh, emotion. Nervous. Cause that's how I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. Okay. Adjective. Adjective, colorful. Right, and I need you to pick a number between one or two. Two. A color. Um, so maybe pick a number between one and, uh, between one and 11. I'm gonna ask Siri to do that. Let's see if she works on my laptop. Pick a number between one and 11. I got three. Oh, okay. And I needed you to pick a number between one and four. Pick a number between one and four. Does she work? Oh, let me try that again. No, Siri, why aren't you working? <laughs> Come on, Siri, please work. Pick a number work. between one and four. Oh, she doesn't want to work with me, so I'm just going to pick three. Cool. And I need you to pick a number... I. So yeah, a number between one and nine. One and nine, uh, let's pick seven. Alrighty, and I need a number between one and, I don't know why I'm suddenly talking with an American accent. <laughs> 11. <laughs> one. And I need a number between one and 14. 14. Okay. <laughs> okay. And I need the number between 1 and 11. 5. And a number between 1 and 4. 4. And a number between 1 and 11. 8. And I need a number between... <laughs> so we have a game in the UK, which is like a show where people say numbers. It's like, oh, I need small or large. And I feel like we're playing this right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so a number between 1 and 14. Um, let's pick... Six again. And a number between one and... Oh, I need an adjective. Oh, an adjective? Uh, let's pick old. Okay. And I need a number between one and 15. Six. Cool. Oh my gosh, that's exciting. Right. Ooh. Okay, yeah. Those were just completely random numbers, so let's let's see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm gonna need five minutes to make sure that the script is perfectly done. So uh yeah, let's let's do the okay. magic of YouTube. So we are here in spring at the Nancy Drew Theatre Celebration. And can you believe it? We have the world's up and coming designer and fashionista, Alex of Whispered Moon. How are you feeling today, Alex? Nervous. 
<laughs> what a colorful emotion. You know, we're all rooting for you. So what will you be presenting? I'm demonstrating a two-piece collection. Oh, how exciting. So can you give us a few more details, Alex? Well, yes, it's a yellow skirt with a color block made of fleece. Uh, my favorite thing about it is the adjustable straps. It comes paired with a blue jacket. This is made of denim, detailed with solid color sleeves. Finally, I think that this season's old accessory is a bracelet. So I've added one to the collection. Well, that was <laughs> quite the description there, Alex. This is gonna be so exciting. You are a, definitely a maestro when it comes to making. So I'm sure this is gonna be phenomenal stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I can't wait to do that entire collection. It seems so, so wonderful. And I can't wait to try to make this, but I already have an idea for how I want to do this. So I'm excited to get going on this. And I think if we're really being honest, a lot of that didn't make grammatical sense. So if you could just incorporate one of the many features. So this is going to be really fun, I think, but I'm also so nervous about how I'm going to put this together. Yellow fleece I can handle, color blocking too, but straps? Adjustable straps? How am I going to put this on a skirt? <laughs> I just don't think that there's a sewing pattern out there that can help me. So I think I'm actually going to have to use my brain juices for this one. Let's start at step one, identifying the prompt. <laughs> The skirt must follow the following criteria. Yellow, color blocked, fleece, and adjustable straps. Then the jacket must be blue, solid colored sleeves, and be denim. For my bonus item, it must be an old bracelet. Oh, and it's all themed for Nancy Drew theater celebration in spring. Perfect, let's make this work. I am starting with the skirt first because the jacket will be much easier. Let's go over material. Yellow fleece isn't as constrictive of a criteria as it originally appears to be. Fleece is a broad term. While it can mean polar fleece like the teddy jackets are made out of or blankets or whatever, it is also another name for the material that makes up sweatpants. Which I have seen sweatpants skirts before and I can handle that. In fact, I happen to have a sweatpants skirt pattern right here. But in order to do some interesting color blocking, and that's something I really want to play with, not only that, but I think I'll actually be more comfortable in something longer. So I chose the maxi option like in the pattern picture. One small problem though, I don't have yellow fleece. Like seriously, the online fabric stores don't sell it and the ones that do are really expensive. Pause, amazon.com it is. I purchased a yellow sweatshirt. Haha, <laughs> yeah, now you see what those videos I did last month were for. This is the reason I've been getting into color blocking and using yellow, a color I would never have chosen for myself, but you know what, it's grown on me. Perhaps out of force, but the point still stands. <laughs> I got pink, gray, and green as well. I bought them in darker colors because I don't really like pastels. I'm more of like a jewel tone fan myself, but that doesn't matter right now because I need to actually try to color block something. I made a few sketches and I decided on this one. Then I pulled out the pattern, which turned out to be a giant rectangle, which means it was easy to copy over onto the medical exam paper to play with. I used a French curve and my main concern was matching the sides of the color blocking so that it would match up with the front and the back. I realized that how the angles curve is a thing, but otherwise it was pretty easy to just try to draw lines until it looked like my picture. Then I cut the pattern apart on the lines and pinned it to my fabric. So before I cut out my fabric, I wanna be a little paranoid. This might just be a personality trait, but I used my fabric pen on my style lines to indicate where the sewing seams would go. And then I used a Sharpie and made lines 3 8 inch away from the seam. This will be where I cut the pattern out. I only did this where I cut the pattern pieces out for color blocking. The side seams and hem already have seam allowance included, and and I won't need to be as careful about these, so I didn't give them any extra thought. Now, if you notice in my design, there are some pretty sharp and curvy turns in the skirt. This needs some care. So I pinned the fabric on these seam lines that I use the temporary fabric markers at, right at 
these paper lines and I basted these seams by hand. So this was a bit time consuming, but I watched a TV show while doing it, so it wasn't too bad. <laughs> Hey! I serged together the bottom half of the skirt as well as the top half of the skirt on both sides and laid it all out on my floor to see how it was coming together. I don't know about you guys, but this just doesn't look right, does it? What if the top was just pink? I just don't think the gray fits right. Since the top piece of the skirt wasn't as curvy, I searched it directly onto the bottom of the skirt and now I have the front panel and the back panel to work with. The seams are a bit lackluster so I top stitched them. I used a zigzag stitch that was wide and close together. I like this stitch because it mimics a cover stitch as well and it was super easy to actually do it on my sewing machine and get going. Then I attached the pockets to the skirt panels and I stitched the sides together. But wait, wouldn't the skirt look really hot with a slit on one side? So I sewed about half of the skirt on the right side. Nice. Next step is the exact same as the tutorial I did for my first set of sweatpants. I folded over the top of the waistband making sure to catch the pockets on the front side of the skirt and this will ensure that the pockets have extra support from the waistband and I created a channel by stitching the waistband down along the sides of the waistband except for an inch at the center back. I then top stitched the skirt right next to the top edge to give it some extra crispiness. Then I measured my waist and multiplied by 0.75. This is my elastic length, which I just used the same sort of elastic I made masks from earlier this year. It doesn't really matter the width. If you want something bigger or not, you can use it. I inserted this through my channel and then stitched the ends of the elastic together. You can do this with a straight stitch or by hand or just with whatever you want to call this zigzag stitch that I'm doing. Then you stretch the waistband out at the back and close the channel. After this, I hemmed up the sides of my skirt as well as the bottom of the skirt. I hemmed it on the machine with the same zigzag stitch as before and it turned out great. This skirt is mostly done, so I'm moving on to part two, the jacket. Truly, at this moment in time, I don't want to learn how to make a denim jacket since I only wear them rarely and I already have one in my closet, so I don't want to be wasteful and make another one. Wait a minute, I already have one in my closet, let's DIY with that. That's the only thing that truly makes sense in that situation. But how, how do I turn this perfectly nice denim jacket into something better? By embroidering on it, of course. Not only that, but we can embroider it to our theme of the week, Miss Nancy Drew herself. So after a quick Pinterest search, I found some line art from the original books. Disclaimer, I'm not an artist, nor am I doing this for profit. This is for personal use and it's transformational. I threw the line art into preview on my Mac and put a black and white filter on it. I upped the sharpness and then threw it into Canva and removed the background. I printed out this image and then I realized I didn't know how to put it on the jacket. So I printed it on a sheet of wash away interfacing that is also a sticker which I pasted on the back of my jacket. I didn't know that was a thing, but now I have 10 extra sheets to do whatever I want with. Now, I've never done embroidery before. I started working on a kit my friend gave me for Christmas to get the embroidery stitches down, but I knew for this project, I wanted it to be minimalistic line art, so I mostly did back stitches with a few satin stitches when I needed to do thicker lines. It took about three days of continuous work, but it was actually a lot easier and it got done faster than I thought it would take. After I finished stitching everything, I took my fabric scissors to the interfacing and cut around the outside of the design. Then I rinsed the interfacing in my bathroom sink for about 30 seconds and it disappeared. I threw it in the washing machine and dryer like normal and this project was done! And now I got a super special package in the mail. I went on Etsy and I got some vintage bracelets. I really like this painted style of bracelet and I'm glad I was able to find something elegant like these online. They were less than $10 each too, which was great. 
One more step! If you haven't noticed already, I haven't made any adjustable straps for my skirt yet. <laughs> I kind of had to wait for those to come in the mail. I bought a metal snap kit. I wanted to be able to see the snaps from the outside of the garment. That's right, I'm making adjustable snap straps. I made a pattern for my straps. I just randomly drew a shape I think would work and added seam allowance. I cut out six of these and pinned them together. I searched them together leaving a small place where I could flip them out. I ironed them and stitched them closed by hand. Now for the snap attaching part. This was a bit confusing, but it was straightforward once I got the hang of it. I might have gotten a little overzealous and made all of them before I actually made the tutorial part. So here is the tutorial on scrap fabric. This fabric was hard to punch through, so I cut a tiny hole with my fabric scissors smaller than the snap so it would have to squeeze through. Then I took the two top pieces and I set them aside from the bottom two. You set the convex side of this metal plate under the snap and then you use this metal stick on top of the pieces. Then you hammer it in. The same thing happens for the other side except you use the concave side of the plate in the other part of the metal stick. Sorry, this wasn't very descriptive, but I have no idea what these things are called. I attached the snaps to the straps and I made sure to include more snaps on the strap so that it was adjustable. See, I followed the prompt perfectly to the T. And that's it. I successfully made an outfit out of a game of Mad Libs. I never thought I'd be doing this this time last year, but I'm glad I joined this platform. I hope you guys enjoyed this DIY and I'll see you guys next week for something or the other. I hope you all had a lovely week and be sure to check out Abigail's video to see the Mad Lib I made for her and to see what outfit she put together. Bye!